So let's begin this quick coaching and tutorial. So neuroanatomy 101 on the posterior columns or the posterior column medial lemniscus pathway, which we refer to as PCML. This is what we call, or you might encounter in the hospitals in uh, medical terms or medical discussions as the dorsal columns, okay? So again, this is called the posterior column medial lemniscus pathway. Now, these are our learning objectives to identify the components of this pathway, to describe the pathway, and to discuss the types of sensory information carried by this pathway. So when the sensory fibers will reach the white matter of the spinal cord, they will be sorted into different fiber tracts that we call tracts or fasciculi. So they are going to be sorted into different bundles. And these different bundles okay, of nerve fibers, sensory nerve fibers, are known as tracts or fasciculi. And always remember, these are ascending tracts from the spinal cord, which ascend from the spinal cord. It comes or begins from the spinal cord, and it ascends going upwards, connecting to the brain. This is the opposite of the motor pathways because the motor pathways are descending. Corticospinal, corticobulbar, it starts from the cortex of the brain until it reaches the spinal cord and eventually the, the spinal nerves and the muscles. In the ascending tract, which is sensory, the tracts will ascend from the spinal cord and it connects to the brain. Okay? That is the ascending pathway. Now, remember this. The main role of the ascending tracts of the spinal cord is to transmit somatosensory information. So the somatosensory pathways are ascending tracts. That means it starts from the spinal cord going up, connecting to the brain. Now, there are two types of afferent information conducted by these tracts. Now, do you remember what is sensory? Is it afferent or efferent? What is sensory? Is it afferent or efferent? So sensory is afferent. What about motor? Motor is e ferrant. Okay, so since we're talking about afferent information, we are talking about sensory modalities. There are two types of afferent or sensory information conducted by these ascending tracks. One is exteroceptive. Second is proprioceptive. So exteroceptive, and proprioceptive. Now, when we say exteroceptive, exteroceptive, this is information that comes from the body's exterior, such as pain and touch. Proprioceptive information means information that comes from inside of the body, such as information coming from the muscles. Please remember this. Okay. Please remember this. Now, there are orders of neurons in the ascending tracks. We have first order neurons, second order neurons, and third order neurons. So there are a group of neurons that will form tracks. Remember, the bundle of nerve fibers will form tracks and fasciculi. First order, second order, third order. Now, for the first order neurons, these will receive sensory information from receptors and send them to the sensory neurons, which are found in the posterior gray horns of the spinal cord. 
and the cells of these neurons are found within the posterior nerve root ganglion. So posterior nerve root ganglion. That is P N R G. Posterior nerve root ganglion. So please remember that. This is for the first order neurons. Now for the second order neurons, these are also found in the posterior gray horn. And it is actually the fibers of the second order neurons that forms the ascending tracks. They will carry sensory impulses to the different subcortical areas of the brain, particularly the thalamus, which is the major sensory relay area of the brain. So again, if motor descending tracts, corticospinal, cortical bulbar, comes from the primary motor cortex to the internal capsule, okay, uh, corona radiata and internal capsule, what about sensory, ascending? It's from spinal cord going to what part of the brain? Remember this, it's now the thalamus, okay? Now, lastly, for the third order neurons, they will lie in the subcortical areas and their fibers will be the one to carry impulses to the cerebral cortex. So if this is the spinal cord, this is the brain. Where would you find the first order neurons? In the spinal cord or in the brain? Where would you find the first order neurons in the ascending pathway? Would you find it in the spinal cord or would you find it in the brain? You would find it down here in the spinal cord. Okay, so please remember that. So here's an illustration, uh, colored brown, chocolate brown. This is the first order neurons. So it's here, the spinal cord is here. And we have the second order neurons. These are the fibers. The fibers of the second order neurons are the ones that form the ascending tract. Then we have the third order neurons. So look at this. It's the one that sends impulses to the cortex of the brain. And here's the famous thalamus, okay? Now, the posterior column medial lemniscus pathway is actually comprised of the posterior columns of the spinal cord and the medial lemniscus. Okay, so there's two structures there. Posterior columns or dorsal columns of the spinal cord. Then we have the medial lemniscus pathway of the brain. So here's the first order neurons again. Look at that, coming from the spinal cord. Here's the second order neurons. Then finally, you have the third order neurons. So from the thalamus, it sends signals not to the motor cortex because the ascending pathways are sensory. It will send impulses to the primary somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex because it relays sensory information. Ascending is sensory, descending is motor. So what about the position of the ascending tracts. So we have the dorsal column, which is the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus. When the nerve fibers form bundles, they can form a fasciculus. So there are two very important fasciculi in the dorsal columns, that's gracilis and cuneatus, okay? I want everyone to remember this. In the lateral columns, uh, just pass through this, lateral spinothalamic, dorsal spinocerebellar, ventral spinocerebellar, spinal olivary, spinal vestibular, spinal tectal, okay? I want you to memorize the dorsal columns as well as the ventral columns where the anterior spinothalamic tract is found, okay? Now, here, this is a very nice illustration this is a very nice illustration showing you the, the spinal cord, a cross-section of the spinal cord. Here's the gracilis, 
okay, fasciculus gracilis. Here it is, I'm putting a letter X. And here's the fasciculus cuneatus or the cuneate fasciculus. These will form the posterior or the dorsal columns. Now, I want everyone to memorize this. The dorsal columns is responsible for proprioception. So this is position sense, proprioception. It's also responsible for vibration or vibratory sense. So position and vibration is what part of the spinal cord? Again, position and vibration is what part of the spinal cord? It is the dorsal columns. And I want everyone to remember that there are conditions, particularly syphilis, okay? Uh, let's be specific that this is actually tertiary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis, there's a condition known as tabis dorsalis, which affects the dorsal columns. There's degeneration of the dorsal columns, okay? That's tabis dorsalis. Then you have here the several uh, lateral tracts, spinal olivary, okay? Rubrospinal, okay? So tectospinal, vestibulospinal, okay, those are the lateral tracts. So please take note of that. Now here, here's the fasciculus gracilis. Okay, this is more medial. Then we have the fasciculus cuneatus, which is located more lateral. Okay, very, very important. Now, the posterior column medial lemniscus pathway is divided into the posterior column and the medial lemniscus. The posterior column and the medial lemniscus. Now, I want everyone to remember, okay, posterior column and the medial lemniscus. So here, this is the posterior columns. So it transmits information from the dorsal columns of the spinal cord, okay, and it terminates in the medulla oblongata. And here, it is going to form two large bundles which we called earlier the fasciculus cuneatus and the fasciculus gracilis. The medial lemniscus, on the other hand, is responsible for carrying information to the thalamus. What type of information? Motor or sensory? What type of information does the medial lemniscus carry to the thalamus? Is it motor or is it sensory? Okay, I want you to think it is sensory, okay? So I want everyone to remember this. What is the structure that carries information to the thalamus? It is the medial lemniscus, okay? And it will relay this information through the internal capsule to the somatosensory. So the thalamus capsule, then the somatosensory. So please take note of that. Now, lesions of the dorsal white columns results to loss of tactile sense. Remember this. So that means there's going to be problems with vibration and two-point discrimination. There's also loss of kinesthetic sense, which is the sense of position as well as the sense of movement. Please remember this, okay? Again, please remember this. So this basically ends our session. So this is Neuroanatomy 101 and we talked about the most important descending pathways in the other module, which is the corticospinal and the corticobulbar tract. This is the motor pathways. And we just finished 
the ascending, the most important ascending pathway, which is the posterior column medial lymniscus pathway, which carries sensory information.